What are the current unmet needs in the treatment of Parkinson's disease? Uh, this is obviously the uh, most important question that we grapple with every day. And um, the, the most important thing that we need to do is figure out how to stem the tide and stop the progression of Parkinson's disease. This has been a very difficult challenge and there have been numerous trials trying to get at this particular issue and many have been unsuccessful. In fact at this meeting uh, one of the trials that um, we had a lot of hope in uh, the Azratapine trial um, will announce that they have negative results, so it will not have been proven to be a neuroprotective agent. Um, so that I think is the most important unmet need, is to figure out how to slow the progression or even stop the progression of Parkinson's disease. Short of that, some un very important un unmet needs are improving the cognitive um, implications of Parkinson's disease, improving balance in Parkinson's disease. Those are two issues that our medications do not address very well. What have been the most recent developments in the treatment of motor fluctuations in Parkinson's disease? Motor fluctuations refers to a state in Parkinson's disease where a patient may not be getting sufficient benefit from one dose of medication, and they find that they're part of their day they spend in the on state where the medication is working, but then part of their day they spend in the off state where the medication is not working. And they tend to fluctuate up and down throughout the day like this. So two strategies to tackle this problem, one is to give a rescue dose in between doses. And so you take your regular doses, but then you also use an extra medicine when you need it throughout the day. The second strategy is to develop medications that can more evenly distribute the medication throughout the day. So you do not have these ups and downs to begin with. In terms of rescue medications, there has been a um, medication that was recently approved in the United States and it's been available for the past couple of months, um, which is a levodopa inhalation therapy and a patient, when needed, takes a, a puff or two puffs of, of the levodopa and that allows them to uh, get out of that particular off period that they may be experiencing. In terms of the other strategy, developing medications that have a longer life to begin with, there have been a number of medications that have been developed and been introduced in the market over the past few years. There's a medication called Ritari, which allows for more a slow release of the medication from the stomach, and a medication uh, known as Duopa, at least known as Duopa in the United States, which is a uh, dopamine inf or levodopa infusion directly into the small intestine uh, via a pump. Um, so that type of strategy has been uh, has been effective, and there at this conference there have been um, a few abstracts that have uh, spoken to the development of additional medications that have that purpose. What is my opinion on the use of deep brain stimulation in Parkinson's disease? Um, this is an excellent uh, treatment for the right patient. It's been available for uh, about two decades in the United States at least, um, and it uh, is a, a, a very well-regarded treatment, not experimental, and it's been used on, on many, many, many thousands of patients throughout the world. Um, the type of patient that is best suited for this treatment um, is a patient who has these motor fluctuations that I just discussed, these ups and downs throughout the day. It is a great way to even out that stimulation and to give a nice even distribution of the stimulation throughout the day. And so th that type of patient would typically benefits. Um, another uh, particular issue that deep brain stimulation addresses well is uh, somebody with tremor that may not be um, responsive to medication. The deep brain stimulation can have a great effect. Um, if somebody has a lot of cognitive issues or a lot of balance issues, deep brain stimulation may not be the right treatment. And so it really is a matter of choosing the right patient to get a good outcome. What has been, what have been the most important advances in the treatment of uh, neuroprotective or neuromodulating treatments in Parkinson's disease? Unfortunately, there have been uh, fewer advances in this area than in some of the other areas that uh, we've been discussing here. Um, and this is really where we've been stymied. Um, and so, Unfortunately, there isn't a huge breakthrough that I'm able to discuss with you today, um, but there are additional uh, uh, trials that are underway and ideas that people are generating even as we speak. And so the hope is that that is the next thing we can report on.
What are the clinical treatments that are uh, promising in the, part, in the research pipeline today? Um, so so uh, there are many uh, very exciting treatments that are under development today um, that we can, we can talk about now. The, the, the one that I'll start with are um, an, an understanding of Parkinson's disease that focuses on the genetics behind Parkinson's disease. So Parkinson's disease is a very varied disorder, and some of that variability may come from the fact that Parkinson's disease is caused by various genes in different people. And understanding that variability can lead to specific treatments for specific types of Parkinson's disease that are caused by specific mutations. And that um, understanding, or that way of developing treatments, is called personalized medicine, and it's taken off in the field of cancer biology. And that is the way that um, some people envision Parkinson's treatments to be headed. And there are trials today that are focused on specific mutations and are enrolling in their trials only pe people with those specific mutations. So that's very exciting. Other very exciting developments are the use of stem cell therapy in Parkinson's disease. This is a, uh, a very hot, hot uh, topic and a very um, exciting area. Um, one has to be careful because there are many practitioners out there that tout stem cell therapy, but they're not in the context of a very rigorously done stem cell trial. So you have to be very careful, but when a, st a study is done correctly, it can be safe and lead to um, important uh, uh, developments for the whole population of people with Parkinson's disease. And the third um, are gene therapy trials, where again, um, very hot and exciting topic where certain genes are uh, introduced into the brain to allow the brain to work more effectively. So there's a lot of really exciting biology that's uh, being put to use to help people with Parkinson's disease. Right, there have been uh, a tremendous number of very interesting uh, trials that have been presented, um, and uh, I'm very, very excited about the, the potential for some of these, those to develop into full-blown treatments for Parkinson's disease. I've also been very um, excited about a, a few abstracts that I've seen that have focused on the genetics of Parkinson's disease, and specifically on the genetic profile of people who are inclined to develop cognitive problems in Parkinson's disease, and further understanding the specifics of different people and how those different people develop the symptoms of Parkinson's disease I think is going to be one of the important features of treating Parkinson's disease in the future.